Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome back. I'm glad you made it. Um, and I'm specifically glad that, that our keynote speaker of the day made it. Uh, Dimitri Skudenko, hello. Welcome to the stage. Good to see you. How are you doing? Hello. Fine. Thank you for having me. I was impressed how many people from different sides of the world now in the session. I saw UK, Japan, India, Portugal, Serbia, Poland, a lot of different countries, different time zone. So great yeah. to meet it's, you it's all. Pr pretty hard. Obviously, we do not see many people from the Americas at this hour because they're all asleep. But, in but I still this... saw some people from Ohio. Yeah. Wow. yeah. Cool. Even better. Um, yeah, and we, we are we are constantly trying to to find the best mix and start the second day later, so people from the U.S. and in South America can attend from from the beginning and so on. Yeah, I'm, I'm so glad to have you. Um, for people who don't know you, you are with Stripe, or even the, the founder founder of Stripe, and I said, suppose you will tell us a little bit about that in a minute, right? Um, yeah. And I, I also understand that we are more or less lucky to have you here. I mean, there, there was some misfortune to you, but that's our fortune. You, you want to tell us about that or is it a secret? Yeah, uh, <laughs> I don't know. It's Yeah, I, I broke my leg. And also uh, because of uh, the health status is not really good, trying to recover, also had some infection like a an acid case of COVID. So sorry, I will, maybe I will try to keep myself good, but sometimes I'm coughing. So it's, uh, but I'm inspired uh, to do the talk. Very interesting for me and yeah. uh, hope everything will be fine. Okay, very cool. Um, I only have one more question because we finally let you go uh, and with, with the, the actual talk that everybody's waiting for. But I'm curious, how did you get in, touch, get in touch with Mordic? What was your first contact? When did you first get aware of Mordic? And what's, what's your relationship today? I'm from development world. So I really love any kind of open source solutions, any kind when community can gather and build something great. But uh, I started to build my first marketing automation system about um, 20 years ago. So I'm doing uh, in uh, customer data platform, marketing automation, email service providing for 20 years in development. So. For sure, I know uh, and met uh, Mortic in a lot of place and really like what you do. And it's, it's just a great thing. But uh, it's before I knew Mortic, I started to do my own things. And also every day I thought, okay, why I'm doing this if there is a platform, if I already can reuse things, I can improve what all will do. But you know, when you already start to do enterprise thing, it, it's hard to change. I like what we did, but I really like any kind of uh, uh, any kind of open source solutions. So it's cool. kind of okay. Nice. So um, there already has been a question about it. Um, from your name, people are curious where you are located, and I can. Uh, I I guess I'm undisclosed. You are from Ukraine or Ukraine. You are in Ukraine. I yeah. assure you, your, you and your family are all safe these days. Uh, you want to say yeah. anything about that? I'm I'm personally in Ukraine at the moment. I'm in Ukraine in a uh, in a city Dnipro. It's about mm -hmm. 500 kilometers from Kiev down the river, not from uh, not far from. Uh, like uh, Zaporizhia, where is the front? Uh, but it's a pretty relatively safe place. There is no safe place in Ukraine, uh, but there is no active uh, war actions here in my place. But, you know, uh, what I want to say here, uh, I want to say uh, thank you uh, for all people uh, who support Ukraine in this terrible aggression uh, from Russia. Please uh, keep doing this. It, it, it like it helps us uh, not just live 
it's it's vitally important. Thank you, thank you very much. Okay, well, we're we're living in crazy times, and and I can assure you that, that the multi community is totally with you and with your country. <laughs> so that said, let's move on to modding or rather to, to emailing and um, stage is yours. Thank you very much. And uh, we talk to you afterwards. Thank you. Thank you. And before we start, I really like uh, the idea of emoji during the talk because of, you know, it's online. Uh, for online, it's really hard to uh, understand, to keep a contact with the audience. Please use emoji, even if you dislike something or maybe uh, inspired by something, use different emojis. Thank you. So uh, let's go. The first <coughs> two words about myself. Uh, I just use some mathematical equation here to explain uh, because of we will have different kind of things in during our talk, technical and the business stuff and the marketing stuff. But my background, I'm doing about 20 years in development. Originally, I'm a programmer. I uh, graduated as a computer science engineer, then post-graduation in applied mathematics. And oh, I thought that my call to this world is to write a code. But uh, in some time, uh, we realized that we want to write our own product because of before this, we did outsourcing. So we, we write a code for enterprise, SaaS, and, and we thought we mature enough, enough to build our products. And <clears throat> most of products we did in MarTech area. It's how I started to be connected with marketers. And during this 20 years, I pretend that I start to understand marketers because of marketers and developers in marketing automation always have to work together, but they never understand each other uh, because of its different mentality, different mindset and different responsibility. So uh, we built several solutions. One of them is customer data platform, which is a YESPO and the mail design platform. Stripo, I will explain uh, about Stripo edition and Clespo is a widget builder, any kind of pop-ups and uh, sidebars, informers, launchers, so on. So a lot of products, three of them I just mentioned. <coughs> and uh, what also we did, we did the editor, email design platform. So it's a place where any marketer can create the email design using drag and drop editor without any technical skills and then export to any system they use for sending. It could be Motic, uh, direct integration in one click, or it could be even Gmail or Outlook, it could be MailChimp, it could be uh, more than 100 integrations we have with the different systems. So Striper is a place where you can create email design and then export to any system, including uh, pure HTML. So uh, there are... We are not only a system in the world who allows to create email design. And I just wrote a request to ChatGPT what are the criteria to choose the right system. And in all articles uh, that compare the different email designers, in all, even in ChatGPT, you can find that one of the most important thing is how many email templates you have in the system to use. It's interesting because of, I think uh, that email template is important. And in Stripe, we have a lot of them, uh, more than 1,000. But from other side, I think that email template is like a trick, uh, but it's, it's like hack. Uh, it, 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 we're using templates mostly for acquisition of a contact but it's not vitally important for marketers. I will try to explain why. So let's think, let's imagine that every template you have to choose is a one is a light. And you have a lot of lights, different colors, different forms, different size. And you choose what you need. And when you choose it, 
uh, you love it and you start to work with it. What means starting to work with it? You start to adjust. Maybe your fonts uh, slightly uh, configured, uh, maybe your colors, you add your logo, you edit your text. It's not Lorem Ipsum or what you have in template. You have your social networks. And as a result, you have your own template. <clears throat> and after that, you have only one light. All others are not important anymore because of you have your template. You cannot reuse others' templates because if you also have to create something new. So what, what it means that you need all the slides only in the first day when you choose a template, then you configure your own, and that's all. I think that we need to add more colors, more life, more lights in more forms uh, when you already have your template. And to do this, we need to shift our mentality from library of templates into library of modules. For example, in a Stripe, every template have a set of modules you can create for it. Or also we have a public library of modules. In common, we have more than 10,000 different modules. When you have modules, you can reuse this in your template. You can create a module and then update it. And uh, if you're a developer, you can spend maybe some, some time to create it. But when you're a marketer, marketer can just reuse it and they will never break a design. Uh, so when I say uh, template, when I sell template or buy template, I think that we have to buy a list of modules that we can combine in different way to build our email because of have, well, when we have HTML for email templates, uh, for every email, it costs a lot. In uh, Stripe, it looks like this. You can create any kind of content, then save it into library. And when you save it into library, you can reuse it from any email you use. <coughs> it's pretty typical behavior. Uh, when you can create a module. Uh, <coughs> I would like to discuss with you not just power of modules. I want to share with you the ideas and the concept and the philosophy I follow for about seven years trying to implement modules in the core of uh, email production. And uh, there are some things which is not very obvious. I want to discuss them with you. But to understand the evolution of creating email, we have to look uh, how it was uh, years ago. You know, email is pretty uh, conservative. So it's not changing very quickly because of there is no standards in email production. Outlook has its own standard. Gmail has his own standard. Uh, there are so many outlooks. Every outlook has his own standard. Apple has his own standard. Outlook have even their own language. VMA, Microsoft has a action script. Uh, Google has the AMP in email or promote app annotation. So, so many things every email client adds. And there is no like common rule that if we do this, every email client will support this. But how it worked? First, it was a plain text. It was very easy, just editor of text. Then it became uh, advanced HTML. And you can upload HTML. You have to understand HTML. Later, they added like a vis-a-vis -vis editor, like Gmail has now, when you can use formatting, uh, list something, make something bold, italic, and so on, change the font, but it's still very pure. And then it became drag and drop editors, when you can drop images, buttons, menu, on some other thing, and then configure them. I don't like this way, because of 
uh, when we're using drag and drop, it means we don't need to know HTML anymore. It's great because if you can drag and drop. But I am, as a developer, always creating ugly email. Even if I want to create something good looking, I just, I just can't because of, you will see it from my slides. I'm not very good in, uh, in designing. So, <clears throat> and it's not only my problem. For people who understand design, not always can write HTML. But really, who work in, in with email every day is a marketer. Should marketer know all the trick with HTML, all the trick with the design? I am not sure. But when you every time drag and drop button, then add uh, something special to button like a shadow, like a border, around corners, uh, alignment, uh, and how it. The padding between the texts uh, and the grids. It's, it's, it's hard to create because of nobody want to send button. Everybody want to send message with some call to action. So it has to be consistent. And as a result, I think it, it started uh, popular about four years ago, became modular template design. And uh, now it's uh, like a mainstream. I don't want to speak about obvious thing here, uh, but just want to list them, just to mention that when you use modules, it always brand consistent because if you create module that looks the same, you can just reuse them. You, 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 you save a lot of time for this. You can uh, involve uh, your developers and designing to create module. And the marketer can just change the variables of module and combine them in different way. They never can break it. And from other thing, you know, every email have to be tested in all email clients, like uh, using email on ACID or Litmus. It's, it's like must have to check how it looks like. But when you already tested every module you use in your email, uh, it's <clears throat> almost can guarantee that all your mail will, will look good. So you don't need to do a lot of testing if you already tested all your modules when you developed them. So there are a lot of benefits of using modules, a lot of them, but they're pretty obvious. And at the moment, uh, maybe all editors support modular in different way. But I want to share with you what drives me uh, to continue work with modeling. Uh, what, what is a definition of uh, philosophy here for me. Everything started about maybe 10 years ago when uh, I wanted to write some dynamic code in email. I always have to write it like here on a screen. Uh, you ha I have to have some loop like for each with some items that I pass as a JSON data. And I have this code. I never see how email looks like till I upload the data. And when I create this, uh, it's nobody wanted to support this. I mean, other marketers, if they would like to change something in layout, they say, okay, you created this, please update this because of I don't understand what is there. There is a code and this code usually in different dialects. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's, sometimes it's velocity, it's merge text like MailChimp, it's liquid like a lot of other systems, a lot of different, different uh, dialects of code you have to learn. And sometimes even one small mistake breaks everything. You have to debug. And sometimes it works, but some data can break things. Hate, hate all their stuff because of marketers cannot support it. So it was one of the biggest pain when I started to think about coding, uh, like automating things without coding. And it was a long journey. And I still on this journey because of you have to change uh, all infrastructure. It's not only in email building, it's also on email sending and so many different systems and kind of revolution uh, I want to do here. So if you would look back uh, to our UX evolution, we can see that uh, there is a trend to create email without coding skills. First, you have to know HTML now, you don't need it. You just drag and drop things like a module, content item. 
We don't need to have some design skills and understand all these grids, paddings, and I don't know, special things with round corners uh, for different systems. So, <coughs> and consistency. And now we have to think more about marketing. What is a message? What is a structure? And how to control this? How to do A-B testing? And now, when in email, we use more and more personalization, different languages, different uh, data, uh, dynamic content. So uh, it's all going into marketing skills, more than technical skills. And we, as a system, have to improve this. And here is a, like a new step, like modules, clues. Uh, it's a models as a philosophy. Let's, let's, let's highlight them. my first status here. If you're using drag and drop things to build your email, I think it's a bad thing. If you drag and drop blocks, it means you can break things. We have to stop this. The only thing we are using standard blocks to move is to create module. And when you create module, you have to reuse this. So use blocks only to create modules. And uh, I want that email creation, email production have to be focused not on drag and drag and game blocks and drag and drag and modules, prioritize modules, add some categorization of modules, create hundreds of them, structure them for blog or post, for, I don't know, for product card, for uh, webinar invitation, for footer, for header, for different kind of uh, <coughs> headers and so on. So you create all of them and all kinds of combinations and you can reuse them. But what makes the modules special? I think uh, we have to separate design and data. And the first thing I was impressed was a system. I don't know, some of you remember it, it's Get Review. Get Review was a system when you add the data feeds, like it's my Facebook post, it's my Twitter post, it's my uh, RSS feeds, and you can just drag and drop data into email. And it puts in some design, some predefined design. You cannot play with the design, but the idea that marketers drag and drop data that transforms into some content item with some structure that we can manage. It was like a great idea. I met first time, I think about seven years ago, I uh, first time I met that review. Now, this year, they announced they closed. Maybe it wasn't a really good idea. But uh, they closed this year, sad news. But still, it's, the idea is not very popular. Maybe something wrong there, but I very like an idea when you can put the data, when you can put the message. And design can be changed after that. When you have email in one design, and then you can update design very easily and still keep the data. And I started to work on this. You remember the first uh, my pain was coding. Another pain, uh, like a way to solve this problem, is to split data and a design. The first thing I did is to create modules in the system, and I called it like a smart modules. Smart modules is a design where we have variables, and when we can create, uh, we create a design, and then we can say. Okay, this is image, this is description, this is a price, this is call to action button, this is something else. <coughs> and sometimes it also using the same data in different uh, controls. Like if you have a button, you can have a link uh, in the image and in the button. If you have image and description or title, usually you use the same. Mm, alternative text and uh, title and description, which are the same. And I met that in emails we created, sometimes we do mistake. We created everything, but uh, because of we copied thing, we forgot to change some link. 
So it's very hard to change, uh, to check all links, to check all titles, alternative text, to do all the stuff every day. And it's still a lot of uh, errors. <coughs> so what we did, we created design, added, uh, I will show how we added ability to create variables here. And then we set the rule. If we provide the link, it gets all the data from external data source. It could be your database. It could be RSS. It could be your site. Uh, it could be Amazon site. Doesn't matter. It gets the data from there and put uh, into a product card. It means that modules became not just uh, copy paste snippets. It's also a part of email creation automation. So how we did this, uh, it's <coughs> we will have some complicated development uh, screens. I want to remove them, but I want to share the idea with you. So for any module, we can create a data and set what kind of variables you have, and then specify uh, where to find in this uh, in this module this variable. For example, here is a link, uh, is uh, anchor tag. Uh, with attribute uh, href, so it's where we keep the link. Email production and email automation, uh, from my understanding, I split in two, two different ways. First is a design mode. Design mode, it means that we can automate the way how to create uh, email. So you can just put data from Twitter and you see what you will send but uh, you have this data easily, automatically. And <coughs> uh, timing, timing, okay. <coughs> we run out of time and I still have a lot of information to share with you. So it's a design time. Like I shared with you how we did uh, with a product uh, card. Or uh, we can uh, have a template uh, and provide a data source like RSS and it combine a digest for you based on this RSS. And runtime is when you don't see what you send. And the system will add this like a personalization, some merge tags and maybe dynamic content or some uh, recommendation products, which is a personal recommendation and email abundant cards. So you cannot see what you send. And uh, the system like Striper, mostly focus on design mode, but I want to have revolution in runtime as well. To do this in programmatic, uh, programmatic uh, now I will have about four slides, which is a technical. Sorry for that, but uh, maybe some people will find it interesting. I will try to do it quick. Uh, if you will have a question, you will ask, but still technical stuff. In programming world, uh, there is uh, like a pattern. Uh, model view controller. What it means that when we uh, design something, we have to split data, which is a model, design, which is a view, and logic. It means that anytime we can change the design and it will work with the same data. We can change the data, it will just replace data in a design. And we can define the logic where to get this data and how to connect it with the design. So uh, trying to use this, we created uh, the idea when we have a data and what if we can define what kind of modules and the rules can be used for this data that can generate email for us, like based on RSS, without coding skills. <laughs> but as a usual, I, uh, without coding skills, I will show you background for coding skills. <clears throat> so it's always good to have like you have a data and you have a modules. Every module have the ID. And you say, for this module, you have this data. For this module, you have this data. Uh, for, I don't know, if you have three modules in a row, you say, we have three batch of data for this module and show it only if, I don't know, you have the three data. So some, some metadata that describes all this thing and uh, any kind of transformation of data sources. So data source can be Google uh, product feed, it could be RSS, it could be Excel spreadsheet, it could be doesn't matter what. So we transform any kind of data source into what we need to generate email. And then we generate it 
So it's a main idea. Uh, use any data to generate the code and adjust it. And I use a way I called SRT. SRT, like start repeatable tail. It's how usually we automate things. The first, like a banner and the number one offer. Then we have some others in different combination. And then we have a footer. Usually it's static block. Or maybe if you still have a data you want to put, um, you can add that. And here you just define which modules you have and configure the data with it, and it generates email. So it was my main concept we did about uh, seven years ago. It's hard to support because if you still have to be developer, but we automated, I don't know, hundreds of organizations. It, it not became very popular. So I thought, okay, automation for marketers, not for developers. They have to do things without any coding at all. And uh, what uh, some systems that use Stripe, by the way, Stripe can be used as a plugin, as extensions. You can embed it into your system if you do your system. Do uh, for creating like a bonded card, so recommendation. They have a modules. Every module have a variables. And very simple. You say, uh, I don't want to have these variables. You can define your module, your design into like this structure. And <coughs> you you see what you will get, but with a different data. It's, a, it's already better. But the main thing here is a module because of I don't want to write a code how it will look. You just need to create a module, test it, uh, because of designer is not developer. Designer create a design and developer adopt this design for automation. It's uh, usually how it works. Another thing that make me uh, like not crazy, uh, but uh, inspire me to do new changes uh, here in the modules is a session we did uh, this uh, May uh, with Cyril uh, Gross. Uh, he is from Malix company. We did a session in Vegas uh, in Mailcom conference about gamification. And I did a lot of investigation, a lot of things how to use AMP uh, dynamic uh, content in email. And uh, working with a serial, we understood that most of the thing can be also be done without AMP, just using HTML. But you have to write a lot of code. It became very complex. And for sending one email, it's really hard to support. Like, like here, we did a game, like a match in pairs. Yes, you have to find uh, pairs. If you found, uh, it stay. If you open all cards, you have some promo code. Very easy game. It can be very easily adjusted for you. You just need to define your images. But there is a code there for AMP and for HTML. You have to understand all these technologies. It's a bad thing that you have to understand. Another kind of like interactive things is a questionnaire, which is the most popular thing. You, you have a question. You have uh, several variants. It's great if somebody answer and you can say what is right, what is not. You can submit the data. And uh, again, it's hard to do this. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. So what I think is important to understand here, that it's hard to do this. It means uh, it's expensive. You have to pay a lot to, uh, to support all the stuff. And uh, uh, we are out of time. Uh, I will finish in uh, four minutes, okay? Uh, is it okay? Uh, sorry, because of uh, I didn't put in account our initial talk. Uh, okay, uh, very quickly. What is in common uh, between SpaceX Falcon 9 and the modular design? Because of launching SpaceX is vitally, it's, it's not like vitally, it's extremely expensive. It's why there is not so many launches. But what they did, they started to reuse things. So they uh, have a rocket that returns back. You just need to refuel it and start again and again and again. And every new start makes the whole program cheaper. The same we can do here with the modules. Reusable modules, even if it's complicated modules, like we did with uh, a questionnaire. So what we did, we added design saved as a module, 
and also uh, split the data that configures the modules. So you can just put one line of a code, it's for AMP, and it will generate your quiz. All you need is to provide JSON structure, but it's still coding because of JSON. So what we did, and only today we released this, we started to work on a new product, how to create modules that can be used in any system. It doesn't matter if it's Stripe or not, it's, all, it's, it's totally free. So uh, integrative modules you create, now we have only questionnaire, and you just fill the form and we generate you module HTML part and AMP HTML parts that can you use. You don't need to understand the code. You then save it and reuse and reuse and reuse. So build your uh, Falcon 9. So what I want to uh, highlight, uh, I promised four minutes. So uh, the modules uh, also is important that they can be synchronized if you need to update hundreds of emails because of, I don't know, you need to update your header uh, for Christmas time, adding, I don't know, the Christmas uh, hat uh, or, I don't know, snowflakes. You have to update all your emails and all your triggers. It's a lot of time. You can create one module header, say that it's a synchronizable module, and you can say, update it in all my emails. And the hope it's updated very easily. It saves a lot of time. There are a lot of other things that I think is important, like using AI. Uh, we do a lot of AI things. You know, when you create AI, usually you update one uh, content block, uh, not content block, one one text block, but you uh, like adding uh, shorter, longer, changing tone of voice. But when you work with a module, you update content item, all variables, title, description, call to action button. And we did a lot of experiments how it works when you update all together in one context because if it works much better. And a lot of other things I would like to share with you. But uh, let me go to the takeaways. First, modules library is better than templates library. You just focus on modules library. Drag and drop modules, not blocks. Only drag and drop blocks for creating modules. Find the way to separate data and design when you can easily update the data and keep design. Update design and keep the data. Configure things to use synchronized module to update all emails in the bulk and automate your ways to get data into modules automatically, very easily. And yes, uh, that's, that's the main thing I want to share with you today. And another important thing is uh, if you want to try things we do in a Stripe, you can do it for free using the promo code. I just uh, share it on the screen. It's one year free for pro, uh, but the promo code is valid only for one week. Uh, so please, if you would like, register, use it, enjoy, write me if you have a question. All my contacts here on the slide, I would be happy to answer. Thank you very much. Thank you for staying with me. And thank you, Motik, for organizing this. <laughs> Thank you, Dimitri. Thank you so much uh, for the insights. And we have a couple of minutes left for questions. Um, and I'd like to hop right into that to save some time. And I guess the big elephant in the room is basically um, how do people use that with Mordic? I know that people just um, create uh, HTML basically and, and yeah. import that to Mordic, but other other ways. You mentioned plugins. We have a question about documentation. Mm -hmm. um, what what is the, the the fancy ways, the recommended ways, uh, best best practices, etc. Um, to to use to, to leverage all these cool things with Mordic. Yeah. So first of all, Stripe has a direct integration with Emotic. So you can manage email creation in a Stripe or update all the stuff, support module, just all thousands of modules we create, and so on, so on, so on, so on. And then when you create an email, you then can export into your Modic system. So and then continue to use them for sending. So it's the easiest way. So you don't need to export into HTML and then put to Motic. So it's, you, you can like use it as is. It's a, maybe the simplest way. Okay, so there is a Motic plugin? 
uh, there is integration, yes. Uh, so when you create an email and then uh, in a Striper, sorry, I don't want to have a promo, but when you create mm -hmm. email in a Striper, there is a button save or export. Mm -hmm. When you click export, you can choose any system you use for uh, sending. And Modic in the list. When you click Modic, once you provide uh, API key and all integration stuff, you save it. And next time when you click export, it automatically will use this connection to put uh, email into your system. Oh, okay. That, that sounds interesting indeed. Um, then we have a question. What do you mean by saying that the things frequently break from using blocks? Uh, excuse me, where is the question? I can't see it. Can you repeat it? Uh, what do you mean by saying that thing that, that using blocks is no good because ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Got it, got it, got it. modules and blocks only for yeah. building modules? Yeah, sorry. Uh, using uh, blocks, uh, I mean, uh, text, button, and uh, mm -hmm. image, and everything. So you, you, you're just creating some new structure that you have arranged the paddings, arranged the uh, color fonts every time. And when you decided to add button again, uh, maybe it's secondary call to action. You can write maybe wrong alignment. You can maybe set some settings that will look differently in our bio. So you need to check a lot of things every time and care about this. And again, if I am a person who uh, drag and drop blocks. I always break uh, the design idea of my designer. He always say, okay, you did it again. How many times I have to repeat? There is a grid. You have to use this and this. Never use, uh, I don't know. Uh, I think we've all seen that. Okay, cool. Um, there's one more. Maybe it's obsolete by now. Do marketeers, marketeers need a bit of coding knowledge? I, I think you answered that on the way, right? I think we have, marketers have to know a lot of things now. More and more and more and more and more. Uh, if you would ask uh, in automation, yes, marketers have to understand SQL. They have to understand all different geoproducts from different databases. They have to understand the conditional statement and programming for circles. They have to understand HTML. They have to understand how to uh, segment and learn machine, uh, some uh, machine learning system. So they have to do a lot of technical stuff, but it means they cannot do this. They have to focus on the most important. And if we, as a tool, this, we can build a framework that when they don't need to care about not important things, because of Google, every, th every time changes something. Apple, every time changes something. You have to think about all Outlook clients, some word in giant that shows, and as an Internet Explorer that renders your email, it's always terrible. You don't need to spend years to learn this. Okay. So I think that world is going to the way when we don't need to know all this basic, fundamental technical stuff. We need to okay. care about more high level things. Okay. Shows sorry, us. sorry to interrupt you. I'd like to squeeze in one more and, and, and ask you for a real brief answer. And uh, that is about uh, MGML. You may know that in Mordic we use MGML as a high level uh, markup language for things. And the question here is do you have any plans on supporting MGML uh, with Stripe? Or <coughs> to be honest, not because of uh, we're trying to use different concepts which is really the same. So like you have a content, uh, content item, the block with a variable. So it's a high level, a descriptive thing. You can just reuse to regenerate the code again, but it's coding. It's it's a coding. Uh, it's hard to learn. It's hard if you have a new email marketer, okay. because you, yes, time out. We get it, we get it. So when you put an ass and you promote it to the new position, somebody has to support all you did. Yeah. And usually, you broke all knowledge when you promoted to another position. Yes, okay. I'm done. Okay. So sorry. I, I wish we had more time. It's, it's good stuff and good good inspiration also for the Modic teams and users. Uh, thank you so much. We, we're going to continue with two tracks now. One is about um, distributed marketing automation in, in a global franchise. And the other is the kickoff for a series of lightning talks. And the first one is about 
personalizing newsletters to four different audiences. Uh, um, that's two things coming up right now. For now, I want to thank you once again, Dimitri. Thank Stay you. Safe. Um, I hope to talk to you soon. Thank you very much for being here and for your time and insights. Thanks. Bye-bye. Um,